Hi, my name is Brian Mickelson. I'm with Go and Do Travel, and uh, I will be kind of conducting the Zoom call, and we're just going to wait just a minute to see if many others will join us here. But we have uh, many of our team here on the call with us. Um, uh, Savannah is in our uh, customer support, and she will be answering questions today on our chat as you go as we go through the trip. Um, and Courtney is with us. She is uh, handling logistics and also helping me in the presentation today. Also, uh, Garrett is with us and he is kind of driving the video for moving the screens up and down so that we can coordinate the, the conversation with the screen. So we're very excited to have you along with us for this um, gospel in Egypt tour and also the uh, uh, extension to Turkey that uh, many of you are taking. And we're excited to have you on board for this very exciting trip to Egypt. Um, when I think of Egypt, Egypt is probably one of my number one places in the world to visit. And it's very exciting and it's uh, eye-opening. So it's a very fun trip. Um, just kind of want to you know, go over, if you have questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat on the, the Zoom. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, the answers to questions through chat. So your microphones will be muted until the end of the conversation. And then we can also have a unmute you and you can ask questions at the end of the call. Um, we also like to uh, invite Bruce Porter uh, he's here with us on the Zoom call. If uh, if uh, Garrett, if you can work with that audio, getting Bruce to say hello and get him unmuted, that would be great. Uh, Bruce, are you there? Is your mic on? Apparently not. Okay. So we'll keep trying uh, and we'll get Bruce on as we go along here. Um, so I don't know if any of you have been to Egypt yet, but uh, Egypt is a very exciting place. Uh, you'll find very nice places in Egypt and you'll find very third world places. And so it's a lot of contrast between where you'll be staying and the accommodations that you have, which are very nice, and some of the other things that you'll see in the country. But generally speaking, we will travel uh, as a group. We will have our guide with us, which is a, our local Egyptian guide and guides. We will have our security people with us. And I will be there uh, with, uh, with you and Bruce Porter will be there with you and Garrett will be with you. So we'll have uh, a good team with you to support you and take you through the trip. Um, one thing I wanted to go through is, uh, I, Courtney, maybe we wanna go through the the, the welcome packet and get that on the screen. And Bruce, can you hear us yet? Can you talk? <laughs> can we hear you? We, we can't hear you. <laughs> sure you can. You just got to try. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Great. Okay. So here we are. Uh, this is a travel packet that has been emailed you and you'll probably get one more in your email before you travel. But this is a uh, a description of our trip that's going through. And we'll just kind of go through some of the things that are in the trip and then we'll answer questions as we go along. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Okay, so the section here, uh, know before you go. If you have not uh, considered getting travel insurance, um, it might be a good idea to just getting a message in here. Um, 
I also want to welcome Greg Matson here on the call. Uh, so you can unmute Greg and we'll get you introduced also, Greg, here in a minute. Um, but we have uh, an opportunity for you to purchase travel insurance. It's uh, it's off, obviously an optional thing, but if you were to have any issues in the country or on the trip, there are two different kinds of insurance that you can get. One is for travel for covering uh, incidents that may happen before the trip. And then there's insurance for if you want to just buy insurance for while you're traveling. It's a lot less expensive just to buy insurance if for while you're traveling than to buy it prior to the trip and trying if you're wanting to be refunded prior to the trip because of an incident. Because it's just cheaper to cover you for just the space that you're on the trip. Um, there's a difference in price. So if you uh, are interested in getting travel insurance, which, uh, by the way, I, I always have travel insurance, but um, it's up to you how you want to deal with that if you do have an incident. So just think about how you want to do that if you, you want to be prepared for that. Um, Courtney, not Courtney, but uh, Savannah would be available in the chat if you are interested in picking up any travel insurance. Um, you can just message her in the chat right now and she'll make a note of it and get a quote out to you. So you won't have to think about it. We'll get back to you if you put it in right now. Um, one other thing is um, uh, verifying your passport. And maybe Courtney, do you wanna go through these steps here? Yeah, for sure. Um... So verifying your passport is going to be super important um, prior to going, especially checking your expiration date. Um, you want to make sure that it's, it doesn't expire within six months of returning, um, or you could have some issues with the airports. So just check that date, make sure it's good. Um, and then one other thing we recommend with your passport is making photocopies of it. Um, how many would you recommend making, Brian? Like, you know, it's really nice to have several copies because you, if you turn them in <clears throat> in the beginning of the trip, your copies, we can pass them out to the hotels and it will make your check-in quicker at the hotels. So I would, I would say take uh, five or six photocopies of your passport photo page and uh, bring those along with you. Uh, they're very helpful and useful when checking in and out of the hotels or onto the ship. Um, it's just nice to be able to do that. And instead of turning your passport in, you can just give them a photocopy and you'll always keep your passport with you if you can just turn in a photocopy. Mm -hmm. And it's super helpful to have if you do end up for some in some way losing your passport. Um, it will it'll be really um, beneficial in returning to the US. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll go down to the next one. And um, Monica... did we talk about being valid for six months beyond your return date? Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, your flights, I think we have everyone's flight schedules um, now. So our team and Brian and Garrett will have that in Egypt and they'll be watching for you guys upon arrival. Um, and we'll go over arrival instructions in just a second. Um, but just monitor your flights from now until you depart. If you do have any schedule changes, um, your arrival time changes or anything like that, please just let us know because um, that'll be super helpful um, in picking you up at the airport. Um, and then checking the weather, you can use weather.com and adjust the location to wherever you want to look at. And you can kind of see what the weather's like there. Um, if you need jackets or umbrellas or anything like that, you can kind of gauge it that way. Okay. Um, your cell phone. So most plans don't cover internationally, just on your 
normal phone plan, um, but you can definitely talk to your carrier and see if they have any international plans um, that you can add while you're gone um, to your line. And so you can be able to use your phone wherever. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can download WhatsApp um, for texting and calling, and that will work anywhere as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi. We'll actually have a group chat there um, for the tour, so we encourage everyone to download it regardless. Um, and you can click this link here to join the group chat um, from your own packet, um, or we can add you to it later on. Um, Brian, I'm going to have you talk about the currency and tipping. Let me pass that over to you. Okay, sure. <laughs> Um, when we go to Egypt, uh, the U.S. dollar is used basically everywhere for what you need to do as far as cash goes. Um, there are certain places that you can use your credit card, but only use a credit card in locations where we recommend it's okay to you or our, or our licensed guide recommends that it's okay for you so you don't get in a situation where your credit card is compromised and turned off on you while you're on the trip. So we want to make sure that you only use those in places that uh, we recommend, but using dollar bills, $5 bills, $10 bills are excellent ways to, to buy things in Egypt for miscellaneous things or a lunch or a snack or lots of uh, pomegranate uh, drinks. <laughs> um, what are those drinks called, Bruce? We always like yeah. they're they're Schweppes pomegranate Schweppes. Yeah, we we found that we love Schweppes pomegranate uh, drink over there. Um, but uh, anyway, using uh, small denominations of cash for things is is great. Um, I just wanted to go over a little bit about tipping and how that will work. Um, we have. Uh, Basically, you have in Egypt, we're looking at about $12 a day that you would need for tipping, and you have nine days. So basically, you need about $110 per person for tipping uh, and bring cash with you. Um, if you uh, want to... Uh, prepay these gratuities you can prepay them to our company and we will handle it for you when you get there um we do charge like three and a half percent to process the money but if you don't want to take cash and you want it to be prepaid for you then we'll we'll go ahead and do that for you and we'll we'll put a deadline on that for you to Repay that $115 would be if you want to do it by credit card um, per person. The deadline would be August 30th to get that done if you want to prepay on a credit card because uh, we'll have to take care of the processing and get that money to Egypt. So um, other than that, if you want to bring the cash wish with you, that's fine. No. We're going to have a meeting in the hotel when you, uh, not the first night, but the second night that you arrive, uh, the night before we fly down to uh, Abu Simbel, not Abu Simbel, but uh, Aswan. Um, uh, we'll have a meeting where you, we can collect your cash for tips and uh, this will be done so that you are not trying to run around and tip every person that you're trying that is serving us that we would would take care of for you. So uh, Garrett is in charge of the logistics of handling the tipping, and he distributes the money out to all the different people that are serving us. And so that first uh, or the second night that you're there, that money for tipping would be collected and then we'll start distributing that money. Um, there may be a few things that are not included when you do your tipping that you may want to have a little bit of cash around for. Um, 
but uh, just kind of keep that in mind that we'll take care of basically all the tipping for you unless it's something that's just a little bit out of the ordinary that you do. Um, when you uh, also, when you, we will talk about some different add-on options that you can put onto your tour at different times. And these are extensions that can you can do on a the day that's called our acclimation day. If you are not interested in just recovering from your jet lag, you can take a tour to Memphis and Saqqara, or maybe in Luxor, you might want to do a balloon ride, or in Abu Simbel, you might want to take a, a trip out to Abu Simbel from Aswan, or take a carriage ride in Luxor. These things you can also uh, prepay with your credit card before you arrive, and they would be done uh, also with a deadline of the 30th of August to do that. Otherwise, you would need to bring cash with you to pay for those, those types of add-ons. Um, okay, I think that's probably good for that. Um, um, let's go ahead and move on, Courtney. Okay, perfect. So we'll just go over electricity really quick. Um, you can see the type of um, electrical outlet used there is the type C in Egypt. So we recommend just getting um, an adapter converter plug-in one. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere, you know, Amazon, Walmart, Target, things like that. Um, but it's going to be super helpful if you're wanting to plug anything in on the door. Okay, Garrett, if you want to scroll down a little bit for us. Okay, so this is going to be your travel checklist. This is your um, travel day. So before you leave, again, check your flights. If you have any massive changes or anything like that, please, please let us know. Um, at this point, you can um, the day you leave, you can send it in the WhatsApp group if that's easy for you, um, or you can give Savannah a call. Um, or send her an email, um, but we would love those updates. Um, again, bring your passport, make sure you have your copies of it, and that you're valid for six months after your return. Um, when you arrive in Egypt, make sure you turn your phone on. That's going to be your biggest, most important thing. Um, if our guides cannot find you, that's how they're going to be um, locating you, is they're going to try and call you. Um, and if you can't find them, you'll want to you'll want to be able to contact them as well. So make sure your phone is on. If you need it, you can connect to the Wi-Fi at the airport. Um, once you arrive, Brian, will you go over the arrival instructions with Waleed? Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, Bruce, if you have any comments about the arrival process, go ahead and come in and talk about it. But when you arrive, <clears throat> We're actually going to be met by our ground operators from Royal Way Tours prior to going through passport control. So when you come off the airplane, <clears throat> we know your flight schedule, we know what time you're landing, and our ground operation people will be there to meet you as you come off the plane and you walk towards the uh, passport control. I mean, you'll follow everybody towards passport control. And before you go through passport control, you'll be met by someone there with a go and do travel sign. Generally speaking, his name is Walid, W-A-L-I-D. And we have his WhatsApp phone number. He'll be in our WhatsApp chat. And uh, he will be looking for you and if he doesn't find you, he'll start trying to call you to find you. So it's good that you uh, turn your phones on and, and get connected when you land in Cairo. When he meets you, he will put into your passport what's called an on-arrival visa. And that on arrival in visa means that you receive your visa to travel in Egypt when you land. And he will be putting that 
visa into your passport. And then once it's in your passport, he'll direct you to go through passport control. Um, and then once you go through passport control, uh, you'll go into uh, the area to collect luggage and things like that. And then we'll transfer you to the hotel. So a very important thing is to know that you uh, will be receiving your visa upon arrival. I want to, to make sure that you understand that that is an on arrival visa because they have two types of visas. One that you can purchase prior to leaving with an e-visa, which takes a few days to get, but they also have this on arrival visa, which we have already paid for you to have and that will be available for you when you land. So you just land and you, you'll put that in your passport and you'll go through control. When, the, when you check in at the airlines to depart the United States, um, you wouldn't just need to, if they ask you about your visa, you would just let them know that you're getting, you have the on arrival visa and that's what you're getting. You do not need to have the visa prior to traveling. Okay. Um, Bruce, any other comments about arriving? No, just um, make sure your phone's on when you touch down so that Waleed can get in touch with you. Um, and just be patient. You know, if you don't see him, that's a big area. There's, there's a lot of people in that area down by passport control. Uh, look for him when you get to the escalator or start down the escalator. That's generally where he's at. And look for that sign because the visa will cost you an extra fifty dollars if you're somewhere around that. Once you if you don't if you don't find Waleed, so be looking for him. Look for some other people so you can stay together. If there's other people on your flight, stay together, um, and then collect your luggage um, and then go out out to the and Waleed will take you out to the bus. So. We have the, the ground operators are going to be with you and there to make sure that you're met. Um, you've got your luggage and you're transferred to the hotel. They'll be with you all the way from all the way from the airport to the hotel. So you don't have to worry about anything. Okay. All right. Um, let's go on to our first uh, <clears throat> hotel there then. I, I don't, do you know which hotel is the first one there, Courtney? Yes, it's this one right here, the Hellman Dreamland Hotel. That's the one, uh, that's the one by the Cairo, by the Egyptian Disneyland, so. Okay. All right, well, we'll go, we'll go ahead the, through the day-to-day -day itinerary and, uh, and we'll just kind of walk through, so. Your day of acclimation will be September 12th. So you're going to arrive in the late afternoon, evening of the 11th, or maybe at midnight or 1 a.m. Uh, the night of the 11th. And then you'll be taken to the hotel. Um, the hotel is a very nice hotel. Excellent, I might would say like a five-star hotel. Uh, you're going to have a wonderful breakfast opportunity. And then if you want to relax and hang out at the hotel and just kind of recover from jet lag, however you're feeling, that would be just fine. If you would like to take an optional excursion that day because some people just want to get up and get going and they, they would rather do something than just acclimate, but we understand that some some of us need to acclimate. So we just try to keep everybody happy. So if you want to add that Memphis tour or decide about going to Memphis or Saqqara that day, you can just pay cash and go that day as long as there's room on the bus, which there should be. Um, if you want to prepay it and not have to worry about cash and you know for sure that you want to go because it's uh, um, you're just 
wanting to just go, go, go on the trip and you would love to do it, then you can just uh, prepay it and do it that way. Or you can just bring the cash and pay for it there. The Memphis and Saqqara cash price that day for that tour, which is basically a full day tour, and it includes a lunch, you met, visit Memphis and Saqqara is $95 US dollars. Uh, now, so. I'll let Bruce kind of talk just a little bit um, about Memphis and Saqqara, and uh, I'll let Greg uh, also, if you want, you've been there, you can want to give a few insights about it, go ahead. So we'll start with Bruce and then Greg. Uh, Memphis and Saqqara, to me, are a couple of the most important places around Cairo. There's not a whole lot around Cairo, but the pyramids and the Sphinx, which everybody thinks that's what Egypt is all about. But Memphis and Saqqara area, era, area. Saqqara is the, is the burial, is the necropolis of Memphis. Memphis was the capital of Egypt throughout most of Egypt history. Uh, it's where Abraham would have lived. Uh, it's where Joseph would have uh, been also. Um, and where he would have been put in jail, it's where Moses would have at least grown up and been trained um, and educated, would be in Memphis. Um, and Saqqara is the first pyramid, that's the step pyramid, is the very first pyramid constructed in Egypt by Imhotep, the architect. Um, and that's where we see the, uh, if time permits, we'll be able to go into one of the um, uh, tombs of one of the pyramids and see the pyramid text from which all of the Egyptian religion and all religious documents of Egypt uh, derive from. So, uh, but it's it's um, it's an impressive day. It'll be a good day to do those uh, Memphis and Saqqara because that's where the prophets were. That's where Abraham, Joseph, Moses all lived in that area. They were familiar with those things. So. Uh, the step pyramid was there when Abraham was there, as were the pyramids of Giza. So it's it's well worth the trip because it's what you do when you're in the Cairo area because we will be seeing the pyramids and the Sphinx, but um, Memphis and Saqqara is about 30 miles south of there. So anyway, it's worth going to. Okay, Greg, are, are you on? Do you remember your first impressions of this place? I'm on. I, I would definitely, if at all possible, get to Memphis, especially. It, it's uh, it's not that big, what's left of it. It's a lot of it's underground, but it's just, you know, everywhere you're going to go in Egypt is going to be amazing. It's going to be huge, massive ruins, and they're just, it's just amazing. And it's all tied to the temple. And But Memphis is the one place, I think, especially where you have the tie-in directly to the scriptures and the history of the scriptures. And so that's what's kind of nice. And you listen to Bruce talk about all these things about Abraham and Joseph and Moses and just being there saying, okay, this is where this all happened is, to me, I just would not want to miss that. Okay. Also, the massive statue of, uh, what is it, Ramses II that's there, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Okay. Well, great. Uh, um, well, thanks. Um, so... Greg is uh, is going along with us, and many of you may have signed up because of Greg or or Bruce, and just wanted to welcome both of them to the the Zoom call. And uh, if you have any questions after we're done, we'll be happy to to do to do uh, a little conversation afterwards and ans answer any questions. Um, so the Memphis Saqqara trip is an optional trip; it's not required of you to go on because we know that you need time to acclimate and we're not forcing <clears throat> this on you it's it's uh it's it is important um and it is is fun but it's not the whole reason why you're going to egypt so it's uh, we're going to do some many, many exciting things in Egypt. And I don't want you to feel like, oh, if I don't do that, it's it's not a big deal. But I'm just saying that you can go to Memphis if you feel good enough to go um, after your jet lag. You're not you're still going to see other things that are similar and, and much like that. Um, but if you but if you want to go, it's it's available to you. I'm 
certainly not a, a make it or break it for the trip. Um, the other thing, uh, we can go down and we can talk now about uh, when we leave Cairo, like after our day of acclimation, the next day we'll fly to Aswan. And this is where we're going to embark the ship. Um, but when we get to Ans in, into Aswan, we'll visit the Temple of Philae. This is a beautiful temple that uh, is surrounded by water. You'll get to meet uh, a Nubian village people on this tour. You'll get to meet people that uh, is very interesting to me about their genetics. They're so different. Um, you'll find uh, many of the Nubian people have dark skin, but they will have blue eyes or green eyes. And so that's very, very interesting to me. It, it kind of surprised me the first time I saw that, but it's very, very interesting. This is kind of where the headwaters of the Nile begin. There's a, a dam there at Aswan that is dammed up. And uh, so there's a great big lake beyond Aswan. And then there's the, the Nile River below it that feeds all of Egypt with their for their agriculture along the Nile River. Um, it is said that you know below the dam there are not any crocodiles, but above the dam there are. So we we you you probably will have a chance to see a crocodile or two though. So that'll be fun. Um, in Aswan, after we visit these temples, you also have an opportunity for what's an kind of a, a very long bus ride, which uh, which again, this is something that's not included in this tour, but it uh, because it's so strenuous, we do not include it. But if you are interested in doing it, there's time to do it. It's called the trip to uh, uh, Abu Simbel. I'm sorry, I just barely came off the tip of my tongue there, mm -hmm. Abu Simbel. If you have watched uh, like the Agatha Christie movie, the murder or death on the Nile or something like that, uh, the name of that movie, especially the remake that was just a few years ago, you would see uh, a riverboat on the on the lake there by Abu Simbel. And this is kind of where they shot the movie. And so uh, it's, it's a it's a beautiful spot. It's not uh, really too significant because it's kind of there's some great big monolithic statues in front of it, but there's not too much behind it. Um, but if you're saying I wanted to add that to my bucket list while I'm there, then it's available to you. And Memphis and uh, Abu Simbel is a, a is an add-on because it is kind of a strenuous trip for you to leave early in the morning and come back. Um, and so it is a $200 add-on if you want to do that. And the group would be doing other activities in Aswan that you would probably miss out on if you go to Abu Simbel, um, which is a trip to a Nubian village. Um, and so that's a choice you would need to make. Um, um, I have done both and they're both really good. So I, I can't say one way or the other, but we do have that option for you if you want to do that alternate trip to Abu Simbel. Um, and you can prepay those these things before you leave with your credit card if you get that into us by the 30th of August. Okay, we will also be boarding the ship and using the ship as our hotel. And so uh, we'll have a conference in the evening with Bruce and Greg on the ship. And then the next day we'll set sail for uh, a temple that's on the Nile River. Uh, Bruce, do you want to talk a little bit about the temples on the Nile? Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're actually going to see uh, two of them. Um, one will be Edfu. Edfu is probably the one of the most complete temples in Egypt right now. It uh, still has the roof, the walls, everything's there. It's probably more complete than any other ones. Uh, Dendera, maybe. 
Um, but Edfu is uh, a pretty impressive temple, the way it's laid out, and you can walk all the way into the Holy of Holies and and see everything there is to see there and how it's constructed um, and feel like you're actually walking back in time. The other one is um, Komombo, uh, the temple at, uh, a temple at Komombo. We generally see that in the evening time on the boat. Um, it's a small, smaller temple, but it's um, got some excellent carvings on it. Um, and it looks really nice at night with the way they have it lit up and in the evening time, we'll be able to go through that. Komombo is actually a dual temple. Um, it's actually two temples in one that they've constructed into one. So you have two front doors, you have two Holy of Holies, you have um, two Ulams, you have two um, um, uh, colonnade areas. So it's an unusual temple and it has some of the most uh, ancient medical writings on the wall that uh, exist in the world today so so those are the two temples um komombo we the ship parks right next to the uh, uh next to the temple at komombo in edfu we either will take a bus or take uh, carriage rides uh, back to the uh, through the city um to the uh, to the ruins to the temple ruins there so um, it's enjoyable. There, you'll learn a lot. You'll see a lot. You'll understand a lot about the Egyptian religion from these two temples. So those are the two that we see um, on the on the Nile River between um, Aswan and Luxor. Yeah. Any thoughts there, Greg, of your experience there? I think you're on mute there, Greg. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe Garrett's got you on mute. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to you. We'll uh now when we get into uh to Luxor, we'll spend a, a night on the ship there. And uh Luxor is one of those places that is just phenomenal. And uh we are uh in a place that there's so much to talk about. There's so much to discuss about our temples when we're in Luxor. And you'll find, you know, why go to Egypt? And that people will say, well, why should I go to Egypt? And the answer is, why do you breathe? It's the same. You, you have to do it. <laughs> um, so, We'll just kind of uh, give just a few highlights, Bruce, of the the types of things we're going to see there. We're going to talk about the tombs. We're going to be over in the Valley of the Kings and the Queens. We're going to be at the temples of Karnak and Luxor. And just highlight a, just a few things about each of those places that are significant in a, in a short, brief way here. Well, Luxor and, and Karnak, they're, they're on the... Uh, basically on the uh, East Bank, Luxor and Karnak. They're two, two of the main cities, the capitals. Luxor is considered the um, outdoor museum. Uh, the temple of Karnak, is, uh, the temple complex covers over 200 acres. Uh, and there's a almost a two kilometer um, roadway that runs between the Luxor temple and the Karnak temple that's lined with sphinxes all along the way. It's uh, one of the largest and most important temples in all of Egypt is the Karnak Temple. And we'll be able to see that, spend time walking through it. We're going to be able to go to the Chapel of Opet there and see um, uh, carvings on the walls that are like our facsimiles in our Book of Abraham. Um, uh, on, the, on, the west side of the, on the west side of the river, the West Bank, that's always the area of the dead the west bank is where the sun sets so that's where they bury people is on this on the west side of the cities um, but we're going to be able to go to the valley of the kings uh, we'll see the colossi of memnon uh, on our way while we get into the valley of the kings we have three tombs that we're going to be able to go to um, i believe we're going to do seti aren't we brian it's still open 
the tomb of Seti the first. I think we're going to be able to go into the tomb of Seti the first, which is probably the most uh, impressive tomb in all of the Valley of the Kings. There's one other one that's close to it, but uh, the tomb of Seti the first is uh, really impressive. It's probably the most colorful, um, um, an exceptional one to to go into. Plus, you'll have three others that you'll be able to get into there. We're also going to go to the Temple of Hatshepsut on the other side of the Valley of the Kings, on the other side of the mountain, and we'll see the um, that temple there. It's a tri tripartite temple, what they call tripartite. Um, it's in three different levels, three different areas, and three different levels, which is typical even with our temples. Um, and it's a funerary temple of Hatshepsut. Now, it's believed, and the dating, I've been going over the dating to make sure, it's believed that Hatshepsut may have been the stepmother to Moses. Um, as I've gone through the dates and back the dates up through um, uh, through um, eclipses and stuff, so you can get eclipses right down to the right down to the very day, almost the very hours that eclipses take place uh, uh, with the sun and the moon. It it would put um, Hatshepsut at about twenty one years old when Moses was born. And so she may be the she may be the stepmother to Moses and Tutmosis the third her her stepson and other stepson um, uh, may have been the one that was um, uh, there at the when Moses takes the children of Israel out. So it's going to be an interesting place. Uh, it's right right next to the Temple of Hatshepsut is where the mummies were excavated that end up coming to the United States and Joseph Smith acquires four of those. Uh, from which we get our book of Abraham and uh, both the record of Abraham and the record of Joseph uh, that Joseph Smith translates. So they come out from uh, pit tomb 33, which is right next to the temple of Hatshepsut. And we'll be able to see the hole where pit tomb uh, 33 is at. Uh, but it's um, it's a wonderful day. Uh, it's um, to me, you could, you could spend days in Luxor and Karnak area just to see everything because there's so much there. It was the capital of Egypt after the, after the intermediate uh, periods. Uh, it became the capital of Egypt. Um, and so the temples and the temple construction there just is just massive, just massive. So uh, it'll be a great time. And, and you'll learn a lot about our temple while we're there. Okay, Greg, I think you're you're good to go. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just a couple of things on that. I, I, as he, as Bruce just mentioned, uh, learning about the temple there. That's you know Bruce will be, Bruce will be able to show you uh, a, a number of things that are found on in some places almost every pillar around. I mean, even going down into the tomb of Seti the first, and 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 uh, in the Valley of the Kings, uh, going over to uh, the Temple of Hatshepsut. It's it's uh, the the temple at Karnak. Uh, so there is the one wall in the the uh, the Temple of Opet that is has got the facsimile looking. It's very similar to facsimile number one. It's really kind of neat to see. But all over the place, you see so many so many ties into the temple and to our endowment. And uh, it's it's fascinating. And uh, it's uh, and, and then to tie that in with Joseph Smith right there where uh, Bruce can actually show you the plot exactly where those mummies were dug up that included also... Uh, um, some documents as well. And uh, so that's really neat. It ties in right to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints also right there. I will say on that day, that that's one of the days where, where especially, I don't know if this has been discussed before, but you should wear a hat because it does get hot. And that is one day where you, 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 you will, you'll be out and about and you want to see so much of what's going on. You're going to want to cover up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um one of these evenings, I think Bruce mentioned it, but there will be an opportunity for a, a carriage ride uh, in Luxor. Um, that is also an optional activity if you want to take a carriage ride. It's uh, it's a, a very fun experience. It's a cultural experience. You may find that it's uh, <laughs> the Egyptians talk a little different than we talk, and and they're expressive, and they they they're so expressive that it sounds to you like they're always fighting or yelling. And that may be a little bit offensive to you. So I just want to let you know that it's a it's a cultural type thing. And uh, and uh, but it's 
it's a very fun experience. Uh, you'll feel like you're living the life of Indiana Jones while you're there. So it'll be fun to to go do that. Um, and the carriage rides are, I think they're running at $27 for the cash price. So um, we'll go over that. Um, you can bring that cash with you or you can prepay it. Um, um, I just saw this pop up about scarves and things like that, that you can buy. There's, there's always uh, places when you go into these uh, special areas, like when you're walking up to the Valley of the Tombs or there's uh, shops or people around by the hotel, you can always find a scarf to buy if you want to get a scarf. Um, also, we really like to, to find the snack shops. That's where we like to spend our money. <laughs> um okay uh after we're finished with luxor we'll fly back uh north towards uh, cairo we'll, we'll be in cairo for uh i think two nights or maybe a night and a half depending on your flight schedule and uh, we'll have a opportunity to, in cairo to see the the old cairo museum which they're slowly moving things out of and but there's still quite a few things there i imagine um and uh, we can show you the the warming plates that go like facsimile number two uh, that would go under the mummy's head. Um, also, it's kind of interesting that kind of brings up the idea that I, I know that recently they found some things there in Egypt that are relating to the Book of the Dead. Um, and uh, we have a, a special judgment scene that's kind of like our, our, our third facsimile and I think I actually have one here. I don't know if you can focus on this thing or not, but it doesn't look like it's focusing too well. But we have uh, Bruce will go through an explanation of this uh, judgment scene and uh, you'll see the correlation of the temple with the with the papyrus that uh, you'll find there that we'll have explanations for. Um, we'll also have a, a farewell dinner and a final conference meeting with Bruce uh, before the tour ends there in Cairo and Greg. And, uh, and then some will fly home and some will continue on to Turkey. So that kind of completes the, the itinerary for Cairo. Um, those going on to Turkey, um, I'll just kind of, kind of go through how that will play out. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, things about, uh, John the Revelator. We have, uh, things about the end of the world prophecies that come from things that were in, that happened and written while we're in Turkey. Um, we also get to go to some very neat things. It's a very beautiful country. The climate is a little nicer uh, than Egypt for you. Uh, it'll be a little cooler. We'll be sometimes up in the hills and the mountains, and so that'll be nice too. Um, when we get into uh, uh, Turkey, we'll, we'll take a flight from Cairo nonstop uh, over there. Uh, and we'll uh, have a check-in and, and an evening there, and then we'll start touring. Um, so uh, we're going to have a great, a great time in Turkey. Um, as far as the sites and things that you'll see, I mean, there are things here that rival what you would see maybe at the at Petra in Jordan. There'll be things here that are so exciting to see and you'll say wow this is an undiscovered country um all of these things should be world heritage sites or they should be you know the seven wonders of the world there's just so many beautiful things in turkey to to see um bruce do you want to talk a little bit about the scriptural significance of things that happened in turkey well, Turkey's really, in my opinion, is really the birthplace of Christianity. Even though, even though we have Christ teaching the gospel, but it's after after Christ's death, after the after seventy A.D. when Jerusalem is destroyed and 
um, even later on, uh, 130, then when Christian when Jews are outlawed from even being in Jerusalem, uh, the early church really comes to to Turkey or what we call what might be called Asia Minor back then. Um, but the seven churches of John's revelation of the book of Revelation, the seven churches of Revelation are all uh, in Turkey. Uh, all seven of them are there. That's really the birthplace of Christianity that began spreading throughout the world uh, with the uh, Eastern Orthodox uh, Church. And so every, everything that we, when we start talking about the um, early Christianity, you cannot, you cannot get away from Turkey yet. In Istanbul, Istanbul was the capital under Constantine when Constantine moves there in around three, right around 320 to 325, somewhere right in there. Uh, he moves the capital of the Roman Empire into, Const into Constantinople uh, then, which is Istanbul today. Um, and so we're going to be able to see that. We'll be going to Cappadocia, which is Petra on steroids. Um, you think you, you know, people go in to always want to see Petra. They walk down into Petra. You're there for three hours, and then you're back again. But, um, but in Cappadocia, the whole city is... Uh, in most a lot of the city is in the in the rocks carved out of the walls the hotels you stay in are in the caves uh, of Cappadocia so uh, it's one of the most picturesque places uh, in the world it's everybody loves Cappadocia and then we're going to head on down to um, um, we'll be going to let's see we'll be going to Kushadasi Kushadasi is a town on the coast um, uh, well, it's uh, really where Ephesus is today. We're going to be able to see Ephesus, which is where Paul lived for a couple of years, where they believe John lived, uh, and even Mary. Uh, if you remember, John uh, John was given charge of Mary, the mother of Christ. Uh, when Christ is on the cross, he says to John, Behold thy mother. And then to Mary, he says, Behold thy son. And there's nobody better to take care of your mother than somebody who's never going to die. And that was John. And so we're going to be able to see the House of Mary, the traditional House of Mary, perhaps, and we'll go through, walk through Ephesus from the top down. It'll be from the, it'll be downhill all the way. We'll be able to walk through Ephesus. We'll be able to see the Christian elements there, as well as the Roman city that's going to be there. So um, Ephesus will be, uh, is, is going to be one of the most uh, impressive um sites that you'll see will go to the basilica of saint john which they call the basilica of saint john kushadasi where we spend one night we stay in kushadasi one night kushadasi is the same climate as um, san diego but without the people uh, it's on the coast it's on the seaside you have a bay there the the water's right there it's the same climate they raise the avocados the citrus same climate uh, as san diego without the people as as well as uh, uh, Ephesus is close to the same place there. So uh, that's what we'll be seeing. We'll be seeing a lot of church history as well as New Testament history um, there in Turkey. It's impressive. If I had to live in the Middle East, if I had to live in the Middle East, it would probably be Turkey. A little problem with the government, but uh, other than that, it would probably be, be Turkey, even though I've spent a lot of time in Egypt, a lot of time in Israel. Uh, if I had to live in the Middle East, it'd be Turkey. It's most most impressive, and you'll you'll be able to see that. So, anyway, questions or whatever you want to do, Brian. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, take questions now. Um, if you have some questions, you can feel free to. Uh, unmute and speak and if you just want to put them in the chat we'll answer those um so we're excited to have you on this tour we're excited to uh, have this exciting trip where you get to do two major things uh, egypt and turkey um so the question comes up about clothing and uh you know bruce always has the joke that you should bring twice as much money as you do clothes so <laughs> um we it, it's kind of a, a true statement in that uh, we don't mind if you wear the same thing many days 
um, just as long as they don't smell too bad. So <laughs> it kind of depends on those kinds of things. So uh, it will be pretty warm in Egypt. And I do recommend that you keep yourself hydrated. Um, and so there'll be water on the bus. There'll be sodas on the bus. You may want to pick up something that's like a, a product that is out there, like liquid IV or a powdered Gatorade or something like that, because you want to keep yourself hydrated. Um, I, from experience, have seen a lot of people get sick from the heat and they just can't move on. So just make sure that you've got a hat, maybe a sun umbrella if you need it. Um, make sure that you're drinking. Uh, do not get dehydrated. And I talk, want to talk a little bit about what food I would recommend that you eat in Egypt and what you don't eat in Egypt. And uh, I've been there several times and Bruce uh, always gives the advice that you don't eat anything unless it's been through the fire. And what that means is it's cooked and you don't eat raw vegetables with the skins on them. You don't eat things that could get you ill and give you this uh, Montezuma's revenge because that could totally ruin your trip. So if you're used to eating salads all the time and that's what you want to eat, maybe pass on the salads <laughs> on this, especially in Egypt, okay? Um, we don't want you to get sick and we want you to enjoy the trip. So be very careful. Just eat things that have gone through the fire. Um, I always love to bring snacks with me in my backpack. I. I can get granola bars, I can bring potato chips, I can bring other things. You can pick up things at little stores that are kind of like little 7-Elevens all over the place with your cash. You can pick up cookies, you can get all kinds of snacks to keep you going um, that's packaged. Just be very careful about eating raw food um, Not that's not been cooked. Now, <clears throat> many of the meals you'll find that maybe some start after a while seem to be more or less the same all the time. You're going to have something with meat. You're going to have something with rice. You're going to have something with beans. Uh, there, there'll be some vegetables and things like that. But um, as long as it's been cooked and it's, uh, then you're going to be okay. But just keep that in mind. Um, I want to also mention a little bit about when we go to Turkey, um, the, the tipping in Turkey, we will handle the same way. You'll you'll turn in your turkey uh, tip money when we arrive in Turkey, um, and then we'll distribute that out to you to our guides and service people. And the five day uh, tipping in Turkey it's about seventeen dollars a day that we need to tip per person. So eighty five dollars per person in us cash is what you'll need and we have if you want to prepay that with a credit card by the 30th of august you can do that and it would be 90 dollars to do it with the credit card um any other questions that are coming that need to come up any ideas let me let me just say something a little bit you know brian's right on the food pharaoh's revenge is much worse than montezuma's revenge um and my rule of thumb is I don't eat anything that hasn't gone through the fire. Now, uh, the hotels we're staying at are four and five five star hotels, which five star hotels are different. Uh, there are different than five star hotels here in America. So you have to expect that the food looks good, and most of the food is good. And they and they say they cleanse it with with sterilized water, which uh, or uh, uh, good water, which may or may not be the case. But you don't know how often the workers wash their hands and things like that. And I don't eat any fruit unless I peel it myself, bananas, oranges, things like that. So so it's not that you're going to starve to death. There's plenty of, like Brian said, there's rice, potatoes, there's, there's always cooked meat, chicken. Uh, there's always plenty to eat. Uh, just, uh, just You just want to be careful because you don't want to, you don't want to get too sick while you're there. I would suggest you travel as light as you possibly can. As Brian said, we don't care what you look like. We only care what you smell like. Now, this is a suggestion that I've made in the past. 
um, and people have done it and uh, we're glad they did it. I suggested that they go down to Goodwill or DI and they get a bunch of clothes for 50 cents. Uh, you can get blouses and skirts and, and garbage like that. You can get all kinds of clothes for, for almost nothing. Save a, bring a, bring a good pair of clothes, but every day you throw away those clothes. You just throw them away. Pretty quick, your suitcase gets lighter and lighter, and you have more and more room to bring back the the souvenirs and things that you want to bring back. So um, it's a good way to do it. I've had people do it and glad that they've glad that they've done it. And they just get junk, junk clothes at goodwill and they just throw them away at night. So it, it's it's great for the local. You can just leave leave them in your room for the for the for the hotel workers if you want to do that. So again, travel as light as you possibly can. Um, and just be careful what you eat. You wanna you want to have an enjoyable time. So um Going to once you get in Turkey, you can eat just you can eat anything. You can eat the salads. You can eat everything you want uh, there in Turkey once you get there. So everything's good there. So it's just it's just Egypt. Even in even anciently, when you look at the text anciently, the only thing they talk about. I mean, they show they show a lot of food and harvesting a lot of things, but their idea of heaven is having all the bread and all the beer you can have. Um, that they didn't even drink the water back then. So uh, they drank beer more than anything else. So, so you just have to be careful. So, uh, but you'll enjoy it. It's a great. It's a, it's going to be a great trip uh, with Turkey involved. Egypt was the first country. Egypt was the first country that um, became totally Christian. Um, and um, there was a man, uh, uh, the curator of the Egyptian collection at the British Museum, is named by a man by the name of Budge. He said there was never a people more prepared to accept Christianity than were the ancient Egyptians, and that makes a that makes a definite connection between between Egypt and and Turkey uh, as the church moves from Egypt into Turkey. Uh, but anyway, you're going to have a great time, so don't don't be afraid to ask questions. Okay. Do you re recommend uh, which types of beer we can drink over there? <laughs> a ginger beer. <laughs> <laughs> you can also, you know, wash your underwear out in the, the sink and dry it up. If you got three or four pair and you just want to kind of rotate, you can hang it up and dry it out. Um, that's also possible. It's, you can do whatever you'd like. You can also send it out if we're going to be overnight in a hotel where we're going to be two days or something it might be something you could send out and get your laundry done for you um so again pack as light as you can very light clothing um nothing you know real thick or heavy um and uh as far as uh wearing special clothing for religious sites um i don't think there's a real problem there to you bruce i don't think there's a problem there there isn't um in egypt there may be a little bit if we go to the um uh the blue mosque uh in istanbul and the hagia sophia they're now those are mosques and so women have to have their head covered and you can't wear any shoes when you go inside the mosque so that will be a little bit. That'll be a little bit different there uh, in Egypt. Uh, there shouldn't be any problem um, uh, where we go uh, so far as wearing things. And you can always pick up a scarf or something like that. People, men will always ask, and I wear shorts. You can wear shorts if you want to. I mean, it's 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 not going to be warm in Egypt in September. It's going to be hot in Egypt in September. Uh, there's a big difference of about 45 degrees uh, between warm and hot. Uh, so it's going to, it is going to be, uh, it's going to be like being in Arizona in, at that same time of year. So um, you just, you just plan on it and uh, the shorts are going to be okay in Egypt. People wear shorts there. I haven't worn shorts since I was uh, five years old, um, but, but other people wear shorts. Every time I put shorts on or put a swimming suit on, Greenpeace always shows up for some reason, but um uh, but you can wear you can wear what you want uh, in Egypt. The, the modesty is there, and we don't usually have a problem with it with uh, uh, with our faith. But um, 
sleeveless things are uh, if you're going into churches and things like that or a mosque uh, sleeveless and things like that won't be accepted you'll have to have a scarf and you can always pick up a scarf fairly cheap um also uh, you need to be aware of the vendors everybody in the world has a right to make a living and in making that living some people are some people make a living that's irritating to other people and the vendors we're going to see the vendors we're going to see a lot of vendors um and there's certain things you need to understand about the vendors if you if you look at them in the eye if you if you make eye contact they think they have a sale if you look at anything that they're selling they think they have a sale and if you say well i'll come back i may stop on on the way back he will remember you not only will he remember you, he will know all of your children's name the next time you walk by him. Uh, so if and don't let him put anything on you. Don't say we love Americans. I always say I'm from Canada and then nobody likes me. But but if you say you're from America, they'll say, where are you from? What are you from? And if you say America, we love America. And, we, and, and then they'll say a gift for you, a gift for you. And they will try and give you a gift. If they put it on you, nothing is for free. If they put it on you or get it in your hand, They've made a sale and they're not going to take it back until you get to the bus and then they'll pound on the bus window uh, to get paid for it. So uh, just be aware that, I mean, it's it's enjoyable. I en I enjoy the vendors. I talk to them. I I enjoy interacting with them. But but just be aware and don't let it make uh, make you upset. Don't you know, don't get upset because the vendors are there. It's just it's just part of uh, it's part of Egypt. It's part of being in Egypt. Uh, um, and and don't get mad. You figure out when you when you when you go into some places, and everybody likes to bring a souvenir home. When you when you see something you like, don't don't bargain them down to the point that you of what you're willing to pay, and then walk away. That makes them upset. But you know they're going to start out at fifty dollars. You start out if you you look at something you th so you think, okay, I'm willing to pay five dollars for that. Well, they're going to start out at fifty dollars. That means you start out at one dollar. And when you get to five dollars, then you just start walking away. The blue light special doesn't start doesn't start until they see your bag. You know, you just figure out what you're willing to pay for it. And if it's five dollars that you're willing to pay for it, fair a fair price is when both parties are satisfied. And he's not going to sell it to you at a loss. And you just figure out what you're willing to pay for it. And then you start lower than that. And when you get to your price. Then you say, I can't go any higher than that. And then you turn and, and start walking away. Um, but that's 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 how you deal with the vendors. You just to enjoy them. They're going to have fun. You're going to see on the cruise ship. You're going to see on the cruise ship, the vendors are going to come along. They're going to throw a hook on the boat. And then they're going to on these little, they're going to be in these little rowboats. They're going to throw a hook onto the boat. So the boats, uh, our ship is pulling them. And then they're going to be three stories down and they're going to be throwing things up over the top of the boat for you to buy. They're going to try and sell you stuff as you're as you're floating down the river. So it's a lot of fun to be with those vendors. So don't don't be too um, too upset about it. It's just part of that life over there. Another thing people are worried about what's going on in the Middle East right now, especially with Iran and Israel. Uh, you have to keep in mind that Egypt is a whole different place. It's a whole different world, a whole different mindset. Even though most of them, there's mostly Muslims in there in in Egypt, they are not the same type that they are of uh, the same sect that we see in Iran. Nobody in the Middle East likes Iran except Qatar. And so the Egyptians don't. You don't have to worry about anything in Egypt. I've never felt unsafe in Egypt. As a matter of fact, I feel safer in Egypt than I do in most most downtown cities in the United States. Um, I've I've been there hundreds of times, and so it's not it's not anything to even to worry about. I was there during the Arab Spring, during the riots in Tahrir Square. Uh, I've 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 been been there through all kinds of things. But Egypt uh, Egypt will be safe. It's not anything to worry about. So um, anyway, um, again, if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, and and we, you know, if I if I can't answer it, Brian will make up something. <laughs> So uh, we'll be flying on Wing and a Prayer Airlines between Cairo and Istanbul. Oh, <laughs> they allow you to take a, a checked bag and a carry-on. So no no worries there. The The airline is called Nile Air, and we, we've used them a couple of times, and it works great because it's a nonstop flight, which is wonderful. You don't have to go through Jeddah. <laughs> Good. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, that's who we're, we'll be flying between uh, Cairo and and uh, Istanbul with is uh, Nile Air. And uh, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, as far as attending church while we're on the tour, this whole trip is church. So um, we we don't overwhelm congregations by attending a, a, a meeting anywhere. Um, and really wouldn't apply in Egypt anyway. You're not going to be near a congregation or in Turkey. You're not going to be near a congregation to go to church. So um, we'll be having church on the bus and on the tour all, all, all 10 days. So um, any other questions? Courtney, Garrett. Do you want to go over exactly how much walking to expect each day? Well, I think the most walking that you'll find is probably in Luxor at uh, the temples there. The, <clears throat> the temple sites are fairly flat. There's no up and down hills or anything like that. But uh, you'll be walking over, you know, cobblestones and, and things like that. Um, I would guess the complex is four or 500 yards long, then down and back, but uh, we'll be stopping along the way, going from place to place. And so, I don't know if you have a, a problem with standing or being in the heat. I know that there's things you can buy on Amazon that kind of look like a cane, but they fold out into a chair. If you need something like that, it might be something you want uh, so that you can sit down if there's a need, then... I think those are kind of um, a really good idea. Um, but uh, certain days you might need something like that where you, you want to rest in between your walking. But other than that, I think it's, it's not really that bad of walking. Uh, the biggest up and down will be going into the tomb of Seti and up to the tombs. Um, there are golf carts that take you most of the way, and then you have to walk a little bit more. But then you go down into the tomb, and it's a lot of <clears throat> stairs going down in the tomb. Um, so that's probably the biggest day of walking that you would have is at the, at the Valley of the Kings and maybe at the Luxor and Karnak temples. So if you need some practice walking, get out and Get your endurance up. Start walking now and practicing. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, we did. I don't think we mentioned the balloon rides, and that's something that I, I really enjoyed. Um, one of the mornings in Luxor, um, you can go on a balloon ride. And uh, I don't remember the cost of that. I'll scroll up on my sheet here and find it. Uh, I guess the balloon ride is about $200, but it is a, a fantastic experience. I mean, and it doesn't always happen. I mean, sometimes there's wind or, or something, so they can't do the balloon ride but uh if you really want a great view of luxor and the temples and going over the valley of the kings and then just a, an exhilarating experience to go up in the air like that um i really enjoyed the balloon ride uh and i've i've passed on it several times because i thought oh i don't know if i want to do that but I, i've seen people older than me and and just go and have a fantastic time. And it was the best, one of the best experiences they ever had. Um, and so you might consider it. Um, I, I really liked it, but you know, it's up to you, you know, you might be afraid of heights or you might just be freaked out by it, but um, you know, someday, like they say, someday you're going to run out of some days. <laughs> so maybe Egypt's a good day to run out. Um <laughs> Anyway, um, let's see. Any other questions there, Savannah? 
is it isn't turkey doesn't turkey uh, allow you to get visas when you get there or do you need a visa ahead of time uh at the beginning of this year they forfeited the requirement right for u.s citizens going into turkey so yeah no visas required so and the yeah. flights the flights into turkey or the flights to turkey from from cairo uh, you've kind of got a group ticket for everybody don't you going on that it's not that's, a group ticket everybody has individual tickets they'll be passed out so that's uh, everybody yeah. will have that information yeah that's uh yeah that's a good way good uh good point we'll have the we'll have your itinerary and ticket that, that we'll pass out to you so you don't have to keep track of it we'll bring it to the airport for you um you can re-watch this uh, zoom call uh it'll be posted uh, with a link in an email that you'll be getting later tonight or tomorrow, you'll get the link and uh, you can rewatch this video. So if you have uh, questions you want to go back for and watch, you can come back and watch the, the video. It's um, on the Go and Do Travel channel, also on YouTube. It will be there. Um, as far as somebody brought up binoculars, um, might be fun to have binoculars. But I have never taken them. The larger the larger cameras um, in a lot of places, if you bring cameras with large lenses and things like that, then they'll uh, you can't take them into certain sites like the pyramids. They don't. I mean, they they will allow it, but there's some issues that have to be taken care of because they feel like they're commercial, and you're going to do something commercially and and make money off it. So they. Um, they watch that. If you're going to bring binoculars, bring as small as small small ones, uh, or as small as you can, uh, just to make sure that they're they're not going to be confisc confiscated or or taken. Sometimes you have to leave them in a room or something like that. Um, but um, you just have to. You can bring those things if you want. Um, but we're going to be up close and personal to everything we see. You know, it's uh, we're going to be ever real close to we're going to be walking through the temples and things like that. So, uh, but binoculars might be fun along the river, uh, looking out and looking how people live. The people uh, while we're on the cruise, on the cruise going down the Nile, the farmers that live along the Nile, they haven't changed the way they live or the way they work uh, for two thousand years. They're still they're still harvesting sugarcane and and carrying it on the backs of camels. Uh, they transport uh, transport uh, uh, their harvest on the backs of camels. You'll be downtown Cairo, which is uh, about to, uh, close to 30 million people is Cairo, downtown Cairo, and they're still bringing vegetables in from the field on donkeys and carts, horses and carts. Uh, that's how they bring their food in. Um, be aware of Cairo. Cairo's got 30 million people and they got that live there at one time and they got 50 million cars on the road at the same time. Um, so it's, it's fun. Uh, and motorcycles. Uh, yeah. Mo motorcycles and camels, donkeys and cars, 50 million cars. So it is a lot of fun. Cairo is a lot of fun. It's, uh, I've been going, I've been going to Egypt since 1974, um, which is just about the time sand was invented. Um, but, um, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great city. It's a fun place to be. So anyway, you'll enjoy it. Yep. And uh, don't be chased by any mummies. Or daddies. <laughs> um, okay, so a lot of questions about luggage. I would recommend just go as light as you can. Um, you know, you can bring a carry-on. You can bring a checked bag. Um, try not to bring anything over 40 pounds, you know. Um you don't, you don't need three pair of shoes. You just have some a, a pair of good walking shoes. That's all you need. Um, you know, you have to you have to endure your luggage. You have to carry your luggage. You have to manage your own luggage. Um, and getting up to you know getting your luggage to your room and down. You can always pay porters to do that, and I'm not one of them. Uh, you don't have enough money to pay me to do do your stuff. Even though my dad was a porter and my mother was a butler. I don't do, I don't, I, you know, I don't, there's a lot of things I won't do for you. So, <laughs> so just remember, you're going to have to manage your own luggage and, and take care of that. So you want to, you want to pack as light as you possibly can. Um, 
just to make it easy on yourself. Uh, not easy on everybody else, but easy on yourself. Yeah. Um, one other thing I want to bring up, uh, I know, I believe there's a few people from Canada coming. And I want to make sure that uh, I don't know the rules for entry into Egypt from if you're from Canada. So you might want to check that and make sure that you have <clears throat> secured the proper type of uh, visa or document you need to travel. Just check on that from the Canadian side going to uh, Egypt and Turkey. So I, I'm familiar with what we need for the U.S., which you, you don't need anything, um, but uh, I'm not sure what it is from Canada. Um, if you want to check on that, I would just maybe call a travel agent up there or check with a, a consulate or go on the web and do some investigation um, and find out what you need <clears throat> from Canada. Okay, I think that kind of wraps it up. We really appreciate everybody coming and uh, I want to introduce Greg, uh, Greg Matson. He's coming along with us and he's, uh, you got a role with uh, Go and Do Travel as our kind of our MC spokesman. He goes on several trips for us. New sign, and new then, sign in the background. Oh, we got a new sign up in the background. Whoa, nice. We love that. Go and do travel. Um, and of course, Bruce has been with us for years and years and years, and we really um, appreciate both these find people and their their efforts in in shedding the light in the gospel and uh, sharing experiences so that uh, others can can see and explore and learn and uh, I think that's really what it's all about is uh, <clears throat> you really learn a lot when you travel and it's it's a great way to uh, encourage your mind to to research out new ideas and to explore and to gain knowledge so i love i love the idea that they're both so educationally minded and uh, are anxious to share their knowledge with you um any other questions uh, just get us uh uh into the the chat or email us and we'll be happy to do it um as far as the how much space we have on the ship it's probably we're we're probably half the ship is at least um, um and we'll have sessions on the ship and so forth um it's really worked out well okay um well we'll say goodbye and we're excited to see you and uh we're looking to see your beautiful faces when we arrive in in cairo so so see you long, guys. everybody